Sir, shall we start, sir? Yes, sir, we can, we can start. Yes, sir. So, on behalf of Kongunadu College of Engineering Technology, I welcome all the participants for AAC-sponsored two weeks online FDP on Emerging Trends and Challenges in VLSI Mixed Signal Processing for Fourth Industrial Revolution, Phase 3, for Day 10, Session 1. Welcome you all the participants. It's a pleasure to welcome our resource person, Mr. Naveen Shankar, Field Application Engineer, Interpol Technologies Private Limited, Bangalore, on the topic of design of SAR based data converter using Cadence EDA tool. Welcome, you, sir. So, is it audible? Yes, sir. Yes, it is audible, sir. Yes. Uh, welcome, you, sir. I request Basket to give short intro about our resource person. Very pleasant morning to everyone gathered here. This is the time to see the short biography of uh, Mr. Navin Shankar. Mr. Navin Shankar is working as a field application engineer at Interpol Technologies Bangalore since 2017. His role includes a logical and physical synthesis, PNR flow consisting of a various steps such as flow plan, power plan, sanity check, placement, proctory synthesis, routing and design optimizations. He is having an experience of two years in the field of application engineering for an EDA project. He had uh, supported on some of the design related queries at different levels like uh, RTL design, RTL synthesis, physical design, physical verification in a PD flow. He is also trained in a ASIC physical design and customer IC design with a hands on experience in back end design flow including a synthesis, flow planning, power planning, placement, clock tree synthesis, routing, static time analysis like OCV, CPPR, multi-cycle pack, and physical verification like DRC and LVS. He acted as a keynote speaker and delivered a special lectures in various workshops and faculty development programs. In this way, now I'd like to hand over the session to our research person, Mr. J. Navin Shankar. Please, sir. Let me share my screen. Yes, sir. You can share your screen, sir. Is my screen visible, sir? Yes, the screen visible, sir. Okay. Yeah, slideshow also visible, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, good morning, all. Uh, I thank uh, the management and the team of Kongonado College of Engineering and Technology for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, to be associated with the FLAG Faculty Development Training Program on emerging trends and challenges in VLSI mixed signal processing for fourth industrial revolution. Myself, Naveen Shankar, uh, working as an application engineer for Cadence at Interpol Technologies Bangalore. And I've been uh, with the company for the past four years. And I have the experience of uh, working with both uh, academics as well as industries. Uh, so basic instruction to all the participants uh, please keep your mic on mute and webcam turned off throughout the session uh, and uh, one major request for all the participants is let it be an interactive session in case if you have any queries uh, or in case if you want some topics to be discussed please let me know then and there uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, let me know or uh, you can drop your queries on the chat box okay so let us move forward uh, for today's discussion uh, let us first go through the agenda okay so we'll start with the uh, basic introduction uh, on interval technologies and cadence and then we'll move into 
a must design flow followed by that we'll have a theoretical backgrounder on uh, SAR ADC and then we'll move into the design illustration of uh, block by block design illustration okay we'll start with our R22R DAC and uh, followed by that uh, it's a schematic design and then functional verification of DAC and then we'll move into the design illustration of uh, SAR ADC blocks with the functional verification of SAR ADC and the design flow will be concentrated on both ORCAD piece spice as well as uh, Cadence tool suit uh, for customized design by making use of Virtuoso, Spectre and AMS simulator. Okay, uh, so let us start with the introduction about Entupel. Okay, so we are a design service product and engineering solution provider in cutting edge technologies and uh, our customer base uh, includes aerospace and defense psu and automotive electronics okay and engineering research laboratories on site uh, and online training academics etc okay and we work on the fields of electronic uh, system design rf and antenna and uh, followed by that with computational fluid and fluid dynamics and pcb design and prototyping solutions okay so these are the domains in which we work on mechanical computational fluid dynamics electromagnetics systems semiconductors e-mobility pcb design and prototyping 3d printing indented test vector network analyzers uh, rf solutions cyber security internet of things and power electronics and uh, we have our own anechoic chamber for rf uh, antenna design fabrication and testing at Ahmedabad. okay so in case if anybody is interested or if anybody wants to use our facility uh, you are most welcome but uh, please raise a request uh, uh, well in advance okay so uh, because it might be blocked by some other researchers okay for research activities so in case if you wanted to make use of our facility you can definitely let us know so we can help you out okay and uh, bird's eye view of NTUPL we were incorporated on 1st January 2010 we are a 11 year old company headquartered at bangalore we have our regional offices at delhi pune ahmedabad and hyderabad okay uh, total number of offices uh, are 13 and the overall team size is over 135 with uh, uh, 30 aerospace and defense customers 15 msme and mid-range companies 10 research uh, uh, research institutes and over 300 academic institutions um, uh, coming to the staff split we have over 35 skills executives uh, working all over india and almost uh, all the uh, uh, locations okay and then we have over 75 uh, uh, engineers working as a, a, a technical team across domains and uh, our core team uh, of administrative uh, expertises okay they have vastly experienced in the field in the field of uh, um, ic design fabrication and testing okay and uh, um, computational fluid dynamics as well as uh, uh, pcb design and prototyping okay so we are also the academic channel partners for cadence okay all over india and uh, hansis along with that we are also the channel partners for andrid su orcad mids electronics and semicron okay uh, we also have tie up with nevati systems bungard and uh, excel vlsi uh, for various other activities okay a brief introduction about cadence uh, as uh, people who are working on vlsi should be aware of cadence okay so cadence is a pivotal leader in electronic design 
building up more than 30 years of computational software expertise. The company applies its underlying intelligent system design strategy to deliver software, hardware, and IP that turn design concepts into reality. Uh, it offers solutions for semiconductor and system companies, mainly focusing on silicon design creation, simulation, implementation, and sign off of analog and digital circuits. Along with that, it also provides solutions for IC packaging, uh, which includes machine learning enhanced EDA tools and machine learning enabled EDA flows. Okay. So these are the solutions provided. Okay. Uh, once we go through the full custom and semi custom IC design flows, you'll be able to understand uh, the usability usage of each and every uh, solutions provided here. Uh, as well as in forthcoming sl slides okay so these are the cadence custom ic and pcb design solutions that are uh, provided uh, across uh, across the analog design solutions okay uh, so for in case if we are trying to make uh, or test any designs okay you are trying to work on any designs you will start with the, you need a platform you need a software platform in order to uh, check its performance or validate its performance okay and cadence provides various uh, types of solutions okay uh, in order to uh, validate your uh, design okay so it starts with the uh, chip level solutions like virtuoso and spectre and uh, uh, in case if you are uh, in, interested in working on packaging okay more than uh, uh, packaging before before you go into packaging once you are uh, done with circuit design you are will be uh, into analysis right so uh, for that you will be making use of uh, security okay and uh, uh, in case if you are willing to work on packaging then you have uh, allegro as well as virtue so help you helping you out on those aspects and in case if you are interested in working on board level design then again you have allegro p spice orcad etc uh, so orcad and p spice are leading uh, industry standard solutions which has over uh, uh, thousands of libraries okay and the thousands of uh, uh, uh libraries from various uh, uh, semiconductor uh, industries like uh, texas instruments national instruments on semiconductors analog devices etc okay so even before you start working on the design in order to have an idea of how it behaves uh, for a given uh, input stimuli or uh, for any given uh, type of input signal okay so you can uh, go for you can pick up uh, a similar kind of block or similar kind of ic that is readily available with or cat spice okay connect them uh, to a stimuli okay by going through the data sheet so almost all the data sheets are available on google so you can uh, look for the data sheets pick up the uh, necessary um, uh, details like uh, uh, power supply value of power supply uh, the on, on current off current etc from uh, the data sheets okay and uh, test its behavior so that you'll be getting uh, some sort of uh, response for the uh, stimuli that you have given. So based on that, uh, you can start designing your uh, your own design or you can start uh, generating your own specification or you can work on something else uh, by referring to various uh, research papers uh, down uh, that you get from IEEE or any um, uh, IEEE or uh, um or from any other uh, 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 journals okay from which you can get some uh, research works okay you can also try out those designs uh, on arcade piece and then come to virtue so
okay so uh, on virtue so you'll be able to uh, uh, work on your design right from the scratch okay and then uh, uh, in case if you are interested in making use of the uh, blocks uh, that you design in analog into digital so you need to generate certain library files okay uh, so this process of generating the library files required uh, uh, by the uh, digital solutions is called library characterization and for that uh, you have solutions like liberate and variety okay uh, so it also supports cadence also supports the advanced technology nodes uh, ranging from 16 nanometer to 5 nanometer but you need to have that necessary feature in the license that you procure okay uh, so for any license related queries or uh, any uh, tool related queries you can always reach us at cadence underscore support at the rate of ntopal.com maybe towards the end of the session i'll give you i'll uh, uh, give all the email ids on the chat so that you can uh, reach us at any point of time uh, in order to uh, get the services of ntopal technologies okay and we have online support team that uh, that works around the clock uh, and who can help you out in uh, in all those aspects okay so you, uh, so the next uh, type of solutions are mixed signal and low power soc solutions before we come here let us have a look at the design digital design and sign off solutions okay uh, so in case of digital design uh, solutions okay uh, so the entry will be uh, in the form of programs okay and any type of hdl languages is supported for example you have a very hand picked uh, number of hdl options like verilog vhdl system verilog or system c okay so the design entry can be uh, using any one of these uh, hdl uh, hardware description languages and uh, uh, this has to be first translated okay the program has to be first translated into uh, circuit right circuit level design okay and for that you have tools like genus and in case if you are uh, uh, if you are interested in working on dft okay uh, uh, then you have the tool called modus okay which can help you in generating the test patterns and you have conformal in case if you are interested in working on the logical equivalence check okay any design is incomplete without the uh, physical um, view of the design okay and for that we have uh, cadence provides us with a solution called innovus and once your physical implementation is done you will look on to uh, complete okay you will look on to complete the entire design process by signing it off right so you have various sign off procedures like timing sign off okay for which uh, uh, cadence provides us with a solution called tempus and uh, old is for power sign off like you'll be having an idea of working with uh, static power or dynamic power etc so for those things you have old test as the uh, power sign off solution and for parasitic extraction you have a solution called quantus okay because uh, uh, due to the uh, different layers that are available okay due to the layers available and um, due to its dimensions okay you have uh, different parasitic devices getting generated and the uh, details of those parasitic uh, parasites can be extracted from the design by using a tool called K, uh, Qantas okay and in case if you are interested in working on physical sign off then you have a tool called pegasus okay uh, so these are the solutions that are provided by cadence and all these uh, customized uh, solutions provided for customized design as well as uh, uh, digital uh, design solutions uh, uh, are interoperable okay they communicate with each other 
okay depending on the type of design entry that is uh, given to them okay uh, so uh, because of this why why did they uh, make all these uh, tools interoperable because nowadays if you check uh, any type of uh, device or any gadgets okay it has uh, uh, it it works on both analog as well as digital inputs okay for example if you uh, if you consider a mobile phone okay and uh, what is going to be the input signal for a mobile phone it's going to be ob obviously audio okay and audio signals are analog in nature and what are the blocks okay uh, it is going to be transmitted to some someone who is uh, uh, who is living at any part of the world okay and uh, for that you need to process those signals process those audio signals and transmit it uh, as an electromagnetic wave okay so how are they processed uh, even though the input signal is analog whatever uh, are the blocks that are available within your mobile phone are digital in nature they process digital signals as well as analog signals they either convert analog signals into digital or digital into analog okay so there are uh, digital modules that are available so uh, any gadget that you have uh, or that you uh, look at nowadays are uh, have have a combination of both analog modules as well as digital modules. So uh, this is what we call as mixed signal design. Okay, and if you are talking about mixed signal design, uh, then uh, first you need to validate the design. And for design validation, in terms of analog, you have spectre and in terms of digital you have uh, incisive or cvm okay and uh, in terms of the physical design okay uh, after you test it you have to go into the physical uh, implementation part and for that you have uh, uh, virtuoso in cadence and innovation um, uh, innovation uh, virtuoso in analog and uh, innovation digital Okay, so that is what uh, we see here and uh, this has been possible this has been mainly uh, this has been made possible uh, because of the interoperability of the solutions provided okay uh, so other than these things okay what are the uh, other solutions provided by uh, uh, cadence okay it offers uh, uh, value added services like cadence online support okay yeah, in case if you are stuck up at some point uh, on the tool aspects then you can uh, reach uh, reach cadence or even you can reach enable technologies in case of academic uh, queries it will be uh, it will be anyway diverted to us since we are the academic channel partners okay and uh, in case if you are uh, uh, interested in building your knowledge or in interested in growing uh, in certain tool, tools okay uh, so you always have certain examples that are provided okay and uh, designing along with the design examples you will also be provided with uh, a step by step procedure as of what is to be done what are the steps how should how to proceed okay so these uh, examples are called as rapid action kits racks okay that is what we call as racks okay along with that it also provi pro provides you with the generic pdks uh, as we have already seen almost all the technology nodes are supported by cadence along with that it also provides you with training bytes and custom training programs as per the uh, requ requirement and the interest of the end user okay so now let us uh, get into the topic of interest which is uh, ams design flow okay so this is the basic uh, graph diagram okay when you when you talk about ams you have uh, two aspects okay or two types okay one is analog on top and the other one is digital on top 
in both the cases uh, you should make uh, you should be ready with the analog modules as well as the, the digital modules but how do we work on it okay so uh, what are the requirements uh, from the analog uh, modules as well as the digital modules in case of analog you need the uh, design to be based on netlist okay and all the process that you go through in analog design flow are manual okay everything is manual and uh, it is uh, uh, it is mainly uh, useful when you work on critical circuits okay uh, critical circuits in the sense in the field of uh, aerospace and defense uh, rather than that in case if you are working on some complex designs uh, uh, to perform some complex functions and applications then uh, your analog design flow are very much uh, useful okay and uh, followed by that uh, the module will be imported into digital okay it can be either in the form of analog cells or in the form of standard cells okay and uh, this is about the analog design flow okay and what are the requirements from uh, digital design flow it will be mostly based on hdl hardware description language and it is highly automated you just need to uh, uh, make the mouse clicks so the tool does everything for you okay? it is uh, uh, script based it works on scripts like uh, uh, tickle or shell scripting etc and it also uh, uh, it is mainly useful for uh, um, architectures where millions of uh, gates or millions or millions of transistors are uh, being made use of okay and the once this uh, design is done it will be imported into a common module okay uh, so this is what a mixed signal design is about uh, in case if you are working on mixed signal design before that you should be uh, having an idea of uh, what all things we undergo or what all things we work on in uh, analog design flow as well as digital design flow okay uh, anyway you should be uh, having an idea of uh, digital design flow but let me take you through uh, uh, through both the design flows once again as a, a brush up or as a quick revision so this is the flow chart okay for analog ic design flow or we call it as full custom ic design flow okay why do we call it as full custom ic design flow any idea any idea participants why do we call it as full custom ic design flow it can be directly called as a analog design flow right so why do we call as full custom ic design flow yes anyone from the participants am i audible as i already already told you please uh, let us have an interactive session so why do we call it as full custom IC design rather than uh, uh, directly analog IC design? Anyone, just give an attempt. Sir, actually participants are unable to unmute themselves, sir. Oh. They can only chat, sir. Okay, even uh, on chat also is fine. Oh, yes. So I have access to the chat messages. So. Okay, I don't have the access of uh, visualizing the chat box. I'm unable to. Do. Okay, no issues. Uh, so uh, full custom IC design uh, in the sense you will be. Uh, working on any design right from the scratch okay the most widely used technology uh, 
now or previously or even in future is going to be CMOS technology. And in case if you are making use of MOSFET or FinFET or any types of field effect transistors, okay, then you will be working on some of the uh, main aspects or parameters like length and width of the devices. Okay length and width of the devices so how do you decide upon the length and width of the devices based on the design specification so from where do you get the design specification you get them from the market research analysis okay so who is a market research analyst one who is uh, in one who is in very close interaction with the customers or end users okay for example you can think about a customer service executive or a customer support engineer okay uh, so if an end user faces any problems okay then uh, then obviously you'll give a call to the customer service number that is provided to him or he'll go through Google and uh, uh, he'll uh, pick up some of the contact details or he'll visit the website and they'll uh, uh, they'll call up for an engineer who can resolve the issues okay so uh, that particular engineer the, uh, the engineer who is coming to resolve the issues uh, might get it resolved or might not get it resolved okay in case if he is uh, uh, able to resolve the uh, query then it is well and good in case if he is unable to uh, resolve the queries then he uh, uh, then he uh, um, sends the case uh, to his higher ups okay so they'll discuss how discuss with the design team okay uh, they'll discuss with the design team so that they can uh, uh, find out a temporary solution uh, or they can come up with a permanent solution okay uh, so right now in case uh, they are able to resolve it well and good but they should have an uh, uh, they should also be clear like uh, this particular issue should not occur in future with any other products okay so they'll be, they'll also try to upgrade the products okay so uh, based on these inquiries okay uh, so the market research analysis will have a uh, data okay and that will be sent to the design design engineer team okay so they'll start working on it okay uh, so they'll see to that how can they reduce this or how can they improvise the device uh, so that the particular issue doesn't uh, uh, occur again or uh, they'll also uh, uh, check out with the competitors okay as so of uh, how those uh, um, designs or those products are responding okay so based on this the design engineer will start working on the design uh, on paper first okay based on all the theoretical uh, concepts and uh, theoretical knowledge that he is uh, comfortable with okay he'll start working on the design on paper okay and they and he'll arrive at a solution and different uh, parameters that are to be considered okay while uh, uh, working on a design okay while working on a design okay so uh, after he arrives at a solution okay or after he comes uh, uh, after he completes the design he needs to validate it okay even though he has the theoretical values unless he validates it uh, it is it is highly riskier right in order to move further so what he does is uh, he makes use of some of the softwares okay uh, softwares uh, that are mainly electronic design and automation softwares okay so like cadence uh, mentor or synopsis or uh, micro bend etc okay he'll make use of any one of these industry standard tools okay if you talk about industry standard super standard tools then you have only three of them okay cadence mentor and synopsis okay so he makes use of any one of these eva tools and the first step that he does there is the design entry 
okay so here it will be uh, uh, a circuit level entry with the help of devices okay any type of devices uh, based on the requirement okay so he starts uh, working on the schematic capture or design entry okay design entry uh, and once he captures the design on the EDA tool uh, he'll start working on the next step okay so he has made the design entry the next step is he has to validate the design so how does he validate the design he tries to analyze the design okay he uh, he tries to analyze the design and various types of analysis he goes through like time domain analysis frequency analysis etc okay uh, so for that he needs a simulation engine okay and the simulation engine provided by cadence uh, for full custom ic design flow is spectre okay spectre is a module under a multi mode simulator okay and for schematic entry uh, cadence provides you with a solution called purchase of schematic editor okay and uh, what is the purpose of uh, simulation what is the main purpose of simulation So main, uh, mainly you have two purposes. One is uh, uh, either the first thing that you that you should uh, confirm by uh, simulating your design is whether your circuit responds for the stimuli input stimuli given to given to that. Okay, whether it is responding or not, that will be the first step, and the second step would be whether the response provided by the uh, circuit or design is functionally correct or not that is why we call it as functional simulation okay so these are the two aspects uh, that you'll have to check on the design during the simulation phase once you are satisfied with the simulation uh, results you'll move into the next phase okay uh, so the next phase will be layer okay uh, so what is a layout so layout is nothing but the physical representation of the device or the design so what do you mean by physical representation when you schematic entry for example when you're talking about schematic entry uh, how do you uh, complete how do you work on the schematic how do you work on the schematic or how do you create a schematic by using the symbolic representation of each and every device like in case if you wanted wanted a resistor or a capacitor in your circuit then you uh, try to uh, import the symbol of each and every device onto the schematic okay and then you uh, you uh, do the interconnections between the terminals between the blocks or the, between the modules okay and then you complete the circuit okay uh, so while when you take uh, when you take a device you'll be asked to mention their uh, parameters like the length of the device width of the device or in case of uh, resistance the value of resistance of the device or when the the value of capacitance or the value of inductance etc okay so how does so based on those values given uh, to each and every device how does it look like on a fabricated ic okay it will be better if you have that view or have that idea right so layout provides you with that aspect of the design okay and for uh, uh, having a look or having a, or to get a feel of a, a physical representation of your circuit okay so you have a tool called purchase or layout editor okay provided by cadence once you are done with the, the physical representation of the circuit okay you will move into the verification process okay because whatever schematic entry or layout you have done or simulation you have done okay will be based on some technology mode okay because nowadays almost all the designs or any type of design that you work on uh, are based on a particular technology mode 
okay like uh, uh, 7 nanometer or 5 nanometer or 180 nanometer each and every technology don't have their own specific applications it is not like uh, uh, 180 nanometer is not in use or 300 nanometer is not in use not nothing like Okay, each and every technology node are being used even now for one application or the other. Okay, for uh, or for one device or the other that is being made use of for a certain specific applications. Okay, so we cannot rule out any of the technology nodes. Okay, uh, so if you are uh, trying to work on the physical verification, okay, so. Uh, the purpose of working with the physical verification is each and every uh, technology node will have their own set of design rules. Okay, uh, so the first process of physical verification is design rule check. Okay, uh, so based on the dimensions uh, of the layer, because every technology node provides you with n number of layers, right? Like uh, metal or polysilicon or oxide, implant, whatever it is. Okay, so each and every layer have their own properties, their own characteristics. Okay, and there are certain rules like this should be the minimum size of this particular layer, or this should be the minimum spacing between the layer. If you are talking about design rules, then it is only about size and spacing and nothing else okay uh, so why do they have certain rules like size and spacing because you might have some effects like uh, electromagnetic interference electromagnetic uh, uh, emi emc or uh, short circuit or uh, open circuit or overlapping okay to avoid these effects you have uh, certain design rules okay because everything uh, is based on the moment of charge carriers in electronics, right? So uh, these charge carriers tend to get accumulated around the sharp sharp edges or sharp corners, okay? And uh, if uh, two corners are uh, very close to each other, then they try to form an electric field, okay? Or they create a, uh, they create some sort of inductance, uh, uh, right? So. Uh, in order to avoid these things, okay, in order to avoid the formation of these uh, electric field or in order to avoid the short circuit in case if they are very close to each other, then obviously they might get shorted because uh, um, whatever we see on tool, okay, is not assured uh, uh, that it will happen in the same way as you go, as you go for the fabrication, okay. Uh, whatever you see on the tool will be regular shape or um, it will be of regular shape and sizes but if you go for fabrication it will be of irregular shape okay irregular shape and the size also might uh, vary okay uh, because of uh, the process that it goes through okay like oxidation etching photosynthesis okay and uh, um, thermionic emissions etc okay so uh, because of those processes uh, there might be some variations in your layers size and shape of your layers okay to avoid those variations it is always important to follow the design rules based on and the design rules will be uh, different for different technology modes okay it will not remain the same okay and uh, then comes the next process of physical verification which is layout versus schematic lbs so why do we go for lbs what is the main purpose of the lbs okay so uh, whatever you have in the schematic the same thing should be available in the layout same thing in the sense devices it includes the devices uh, pins ports interconnections etc okay if your uh, layout and the schematic doesn't match with each other then there is no point or meaning in going for fabrication okay only a circuit that is tested and functionally verified is eligible to be uh, eligible to be made as a layout otherwise there is no meaning 
in case if you are too confident on your design okay you can directly go for a layout but we are, we are not uh, uh, that kind of uh, people or we are not that kind of engineers like we cannot assure that we don't make mistakes every engineer makes some mistakes and they used to learn from it okay so uh, that is the reason why it is always uh, uh, better to start with a schematic entry test for the functionality uh, test and validate the functionality of the design and then go for the layout okay and in turn, and if you go for the layout okay so what all devices you have the ports and pins that you have the same thing should be there uh, it should be a copy of schematic okay it should be the copy of schematic okay and uh, this comparison of layout and schematic is what we call as uh, lbs okay that will be the second step in physical verification okay once uh, you are done with uh, drc and lbs you move for the uh, next process which is rc extraction okay so rc extraction that is called as parasitic extraction okay so what are parasites and uh, we have been talking about this parasitic extraction right from the cadence uh, uh, two solutions okay so what is what is so what do you mean by parasitic extraction and before that what do you mean by parasites any device that depends on others okay or any uh, organism that depends on others for its food okay i'm giving you a very basic basic and uh, general uh, definition okay so whatever a uh, term you come across okay uh, in any uh, walks of life or in any uh, type of uh, engineering uh, field okay first think of it uh, in in any general term okay uh, in which you can understand okay which will be easier for you to understand okay once you understand the meaning of it then go for the technicality of that okay so that is uh, uh, that's what is uh, and that is what is in use even in industries okay so parasites in the sense uh, in case if you have a uh, biological background that is in case if you have learned uh, about botany or zoology in your uh, uh, 11th grade or 12th grade then you should have an idea okay any or depends on others for its food okay uh, so an example can be mushroom okay mushroom doesn't have uh, the capability of preparing its own food right so like that okay because of the layers that you had made use of in the layout okay and because of its characteristics its dimensions etc okay you have some devices that are getting generated automatically and these devices will not be physically present in the circuit okay they will not be present in the circuit uh, physically okay but virtually okay they'll be available virtually uh, in order to uh, get an idea of uh, its values and where are they placed how many such devices are there okay we go for parasitic extraction okay and uh, uh, do they uh, cause any harm to your design or do they uh, vary uh, or because of these parasites uh does any parameters of your simulation get varied obviously yes okay so how to check the impact of these parasites we'll read on the simulation okay just if you read on the simulation will you get the uh, impact of those parasites no you have to import that okay so what we do is we extract the parasites and we import those uh, parasites to the schematic okay in the form of netlist okay in the form of netlist and uh, once they are imported okay once they are imported to the design okay we can rerun the simulation we can re-simulate the design okay and this process is called back permutation or in simple we can call it as post layout simulation simulation because we uh, run the simulation after completing the layout okay that is why we uh, uh, call this as 
force payout simulation okay uh, so you can compare the results okay compare the results of the pre layout simulation and post layout simulation to check the impact okay and the tool that you make use of for physical verification like drc and lvs is ashura and for lower technology nodes like 45 nanometers and below you can make use of a tool called pps okay both are provided by cadence okay and for parasitic extraction you have a tool called quantus okay we uh, call it as quantus qrc okay quantus uh, uh, will be the tool for parasitic extraction and once you are satisfied with the results okay once you are satisfied with the results you can move into the next phase of your design so this is gds ii okay so gds ii stands for graphical data stream information interchange okay graphical data stream information interchange okay so what does this contain uh gds file consists of the information okay it consists of the information about your layout okay so what are the information about the layout uh, so how many uh, what is the top level cell okay what is the top cell or uh, what is the technology node being used uh, so layer uh, will be making use of different layers Okay, so what is the layer max file uh, that is being used? Okay, uh, from uh, and in case if you go into the layout, okay, according to us, they are devices like transistors, resistors, and wires, etc. But according to the tool, they are just shapes, okay, like rectangle, triangle, polygon, uh, etc. So it gives you the details of how many uh, 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 rectangles are there, or how many. Uh, instances are there how many pins are there how many ports are there so these information will be available with your gds file okay and to generate the gds file you'll make use of virtues or command interpreter window okay anyway i'll show you how to uh, work on virtues so uh, shortly okay uh, so this is about the full custom ic design flow in case uh, if you have any doubts you can let me know now any doubts on full custom ic design flow or maybe you can uh, raise your queries towards the end of the session because uh, as uh, the faculty told me uh, you don't have uh, the option of unmuting yourselves and i don't have the option of uh, wish, uh, checking out the chat box so we shall have a discussion uh, during the uh, towards the end of the session okay maybe last half an hour or last 15 minutes we shall have a discussion okay so this is about the full custom ic design okay and uh, to quickly uh, brush up there's any custom ic design flow uh, so here also you'll be uh, uh, working on the design based on the specification that you get from market research analysis okay and the design entry will be in the form of rtl coding using any of the hardware description languages like verilog or vhdl or system verilog or system c etc okay and then you will move into functional simulation okay so up to functional simulation in semi custom ic design flow okay you will not be making use of any of the technology libraries okay you will not be making use of any of the technology libraries uh, because it is only based on uh, rtl okay and you are not going to work on any of the circuits or uh, blocks or transistor level designs etc okay so it is only uh, going to uh, check for the syntax and semantics which will be the process called compilation as you should all be knowing okay once the design is compiled okay it will be elaborated so what is the process creation uh, in, in your rtl design you have mentioned some of the logics uh, you can you have made use of some logical expressions or arithmetic expressions etc but how does the tool understand those things okay 
it needs some library right uh, so based on the html that we have made of okay it uh, maps the design or maps your rpl design yeah, with the library files and uh, uh, that will help in uh, verifying the functional behavior of your design okay so first it will be uh, um, a compilation to check the syntax and semantics of your design and then mapping with the library file based on rtl and you'll be moving into the functional simulation okay uh, to check the functional correctness of a design and uh, uh, after you uh, make sure of the functional correctness of your design you move into the synthesis process okay uh, it is at this stage you'll be making use of the technology nodes okay because you are going to translate your rtl into block level or module level design okay and for that you will make use of a tool called genus synthesis solution okay so genus synthesis solution will help you in translating your rtl design into block level or module level or circuit level design as a result of synthesis you'll be able to generate uh, certain reports about your design along with them you'll also be uh, generating the gate level netlist and synthesized design constraints okay so each and every design will be having its own constraints right so uh, you as a so you'll have a top level constraint which uh, with which you'll uh, uh, synthesize the design okay and after synthesis you'll generate one more uh, uh, sdc okay so system design constraints uh, uh, that will serve as input to the physical design okay even before you move into the uh, physical design you'll be uh, going through timing simulation to check if there are any delays slack or skew in the design okay and once the timing simulation is done you can also uh, go through the area occupied by the overall design or the area occupied by each and every blocks okay how many instances of a particular block are available um, what about the gate to gate delay internet delay uh, etc okay and then uh, you can also uh, work on the power report what will be the uh, total power consumed what will be the uh, power dissipated what about the static power leakage power or dynamic power of the design okay so everything can be uh, figured out okay by using the by using the processing corner library files okay so uh, processing corner in the sense you would have uh, come across slow corner fast corner or typical corner or, uh, or slow fast fast slow etc okay so based on those uh, uh, library files you uh, generate the timing area and power report and finally you'll translate your design and uh, generate a gate level netlist file for the overall design okay after generating the gate level netlist and uh, uh, the synthesized sdc file okay we will move into the next process called dft okay dft is uh, abbreviated as design for testability okay so this uh, in this process you will be um, including some faulty circuits okay to the design okay uh, so what is the purpose of uh, including fault uh, to the design to check how it responds how your uh, design responds okay whether it gives you the uh, expected result or not okay whether it gives you the expected result or not um, under any circumstances okay uh, so if you get the expected results at uh, at any cost then your design is uh, totally reliable okay uh, you can rely on the design you can uh, stay confident about your design okay let me give you an example okay 
if you are uh, purchasing a mobile phone okay it is not going to be for a short term usage okay you'll be looking for a long term usage okay say uh, for a period of at least two years okay you are not going to throw off your mobile phone within a period of uh, one month or two months you'll be at least um, uh, planning to uh, use it for a period of for a duration of two years okay over uh, these two years okay the performance of the mobile phone should be the same okay like memory capability battery backup uh, performance of your uh, uh, touch okay touch screen um, uh, quality of your display quality of your camera uh, the features okay so everything should remain intact over uh, the period of two years and it should be easily upgradable okay like uh, in case if you are uh, uh, if your memory backup ha is uh, uh, totally done so you should also have the capability of expanding the memories by uh, using memory card okay of any any size okay uh, uh, either 1 gb or 64 gb or uh, 500 gb uh, like that okay so you should uh, have such a flexibility and in spite of all these things the performance of your uh, mobile phone should be intact and it should be like uh, how you purchased at, you know, how you started at, uh, making use of the device okay the same thing is also applicable for your uh, automobiles like a two-wheeler or a car etc okay so you know, when you talk about a uh, two-wheeler or a car okay then engine performance and mileage comes into picture okay uh, so in case uh, of uh, accidents the parts should be easily available the damaged parts uh, should be cost effective and easily available okay so like that you have uh, some constraints okay so this in order to make sure that your circuit is reliable you tend to include some faulty uh, designs or you, to, you tend to apply some delay to your search view. Okay, uh, so in spite of all these things, it should uh, give you the proper output. Okay, so that is why we go for uh, DFT. And the tool that you make use of for DFT is Genus as well as Modus. Okay, Genus for synthesizing your uh, uh, design with scan scenes okay and uh, uh, models to generate the test patterns uh, for the overall logic of the design as well as for the scan chains okay so once all these things are done okay you can move into the physical design process okay or physical representation of the process uh, in full custom ic design you call them as uh, layout Whereas when you come to semi-custom IC design, you call them as physical design. Okay. And here it constitutes of five steps. Okay. Starting from floor planning. Okay. And then you move into power planning. Followed by that, you will place your design. And then you will realize the block inputs. And finally, you will go for routing. Okay. These are the five steps involved in physical design. Okay, so what do you mean by flow plan? So everything is there in that meaning itself. As I've told you, don't uh, think about the technical term. Think generally. Okay, so that you get an idea, and you can correlate it to it with uh, the activities or uh, uh, with the incidents that happen in our day-to-day -day life. Okay, let me give you an example. For example for flow plan. Suppose if you are uh, planning to build a house uh, with a piece of land that you have right now, okay? Uh, so what you would do? According to the area of land, you will plan your plan the uh, size of your living room, size of your parking uh, space, size of your kitchen, uh, etc. Okay? Uh, so. Uh, this is what we call as a uh, floor plan in the same manner uh, you uh, plan the silicon vapor that is available to you okay or silicon space that is available to you 
okay so what should be the space occupied by the pop up block what should be the space occupied by the memory or uh, the space occupied by the core processor where are uh, they should they be located how are the interconnections going to be made okay so everything uh, comes into picture uh, during the floor plan okay and then comes power plant okay uh, so even you are building a house there will be a stage where you start uh, uh, laying your ceiling okay with all the concrete okay just before you start uh, the lay, uh, start laying your uh, ceiling okay what you do is you will be calling your plumbers and electricians to fix up the socket for your uh, fan tube lights etc okay so everything will be uh, coming within the wall okay nothing will be projected up okay uh, because uh, projecting uh, getting it projected out will be will not look good right so for that process you will uh, call your plumbers and electricians plumber to get the water lines and the electricians to get all the electrical lines and electrical sockets uh, like uh, switch boards uh, with within the uh, within the wall okay so that is what we call as power plant okay and here uh, when it comes to ic's okay you have the uh, option of choosing the type of metals okay type of metal layer uh, for your supply and ground okay because these two are the power lines when it comes to design okay uh, choose the metal layer for pdd uh, and ground okay and uh, you can also decide upon the dimensions okay like a bit of the metal layer spacing of the metal layer okay and from what distance of the core boundary and the io boundary should the uh, layers be placed okay what distance of core boundary and io boundary should the uh, layers be placed or should the power lines be placed okay so everything can be decided over here in the power planning stage and then you'll move into placement okay uh, until now you would not, uh, you wouldn't have a place the design okay because you have the design in the form of uh, you have your design in the form of a gate level net list or uh, in the form of a schematic okay you cannot directly bring that uh, on the silicon paper Okay, so what you'll do is you'll translate that uh, schematic or block level design or module level design into standard cells okay uh, into standard cells and for that you'll make use of a, a library file called LEF files okay LEF stands for library exchange format okay and this is for translating your gate level netlist into uh block level or module level design sorry uh, standard cells gate level netlist into standard cells okay uh, so these standard cells will uh, are constituted of uh, uh, transistors uh, etc transistors or resistors etc okay so your design will get placed at this stage okay at the placement stage okay and uh, then you'll move into clock tree synthesis okay uh, so uh, when you when you talk about sequential circuits or synchronous circuits then uh, the clock input comes into picture okay uh, the input will be fetched or uh, works in sync uh, with the uh, clock signals okay uh, so you need the clock, uh, clock inputs to be uh, included to the uh, fabricated circuit. Okay, so uh, uh, the clock tree synthesis okay mainly works on the principle of H tree algorithm. Okay, so uh, the main clock will be uh, the center line, and uh, whether it has to get distributed from uh, clock buffer or clock inverter will be uh, decided upon the sides of the uh, clock tree synthesis sides of the sides of the synthesized clock tree okay so main line will be at the center on and on either side you have the lines from clock buffer and clock inverter 
okay so this type of uh, uh, synthesis synthesis is what we call as h3 algorithm okay uh, is what we call as h3 algorithm and uh, uh, for realizing this you will uh, go for a process called block tree synthesis okay so as of now everything will be uh, separate okay you have the power line separately you have the uh, design uh, that is converted into standard standard cells separately and you'll have the uh, clock signals clock lines separately so everything has to be interconnected with each other right so that is uh, what will happen during the routing stage okay uh, the interconnection of all the modules like uh, uh, your power lines your uh, design and the clocks uh, clock cells okay so the interconnections happen during the routing routing phase okay so after the interconnections are done you move into the physical verification process like drc lvs and uh, you'll be extracting the parasitics and finally generate the gds file okay so for uh, flow for the physical design you have a tool called inovus and for the physical verification you have a tool called the pvs or ashira and finally to generate the gds file you have the tool called uh, in you do it in Nova itself okay uh, so uh, this is what we will be discussing in the semi custom ic design flow and your mixed signal design will be a combination of both these things okay combination of uh, blocks using both the blocks designed using both these tools okay and uh, any doubts till now participants in case if you have any doubts you can uh, let me know otherwise uh, we shall move forward okay towards uh, uh, a basic demonstration of uh, uh, full custom ic design okay uh, you can also uh, let me know your queries on the chat okay so uh, during the uh, towards the end of the session during QA uh, no, during the QA session uh, that can be checked out okay fine uh, so let us move into the demonstration of full custom IC design pro semi custom uh, you would have already seen uh, one of our engineers Mr. Keta Nadu have uh, demonstrated a semi custom IC design flow. So let me take you through the full custom IC design flow. Okay. So let me get into the tool. Okay, so this will be the uh, uh, environment in which you are going to go on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Okay, cadence will be supported only with uh, uh, Linux platform, which is uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It, uh, it is not supported with any other uh, open source software like Ubuntu or, um, uh, or CentOS, etc. Okay, Cadence supports uh, in, uh, supports the tool installation or tool working only on Red Hat Enterprise Linux because they have uh, certain libraries in common. Okay, and it will be uh, easier for them to resolve. And uh, these common libraries are um, combined together in the form of a shell script. Okay, uh, so even before we start first let us uh, uh, create a workspace workspace in the sense a folder okay so let us create a folder okay uh, you have two options of uh, creating the folder now uh, either you can uh, just make a right click and go for create folder so you'll be getting something like this you can give some name like uh, uh, kundu okay you can give some name and click on enter so that it gets created or you can uh, go for the other option you can uh, use commands okay because linux environment will mostly work on commands right 
So I'll make a right click and go for open in terminal. Okay. Uh, just before that, let me activate my license. Okay, so uh, I'll open a terminal. Uh, let me increase the font size. Okay, so first I'll uh, uh, create my workspace using the command NKDIR. NKDIR stands for make directory, right? NK type in this ls stands for list all files and folders in that directory okay so type ls and the click on enter so you can see see the folders that are already created and among them you can also see kongunadu and Kong that we had created recently okay and uh, in order to enter into that workspace currently you are in desktop right uh, in order to enter into that folder the command is cd space name of that folder okay and uh, commands are case sensitive in terms of linux okay so uh, in case if it is in lowercase they are type the name in lowercase itself or give it in uppercase okay uh, so i can type cd space kundunaro cd stands for change directory click on enter okay now you can see from desktop uh, the location has changed to Kumbunar. So you have entered into that particular directory. Now I can initialize the shell script by typing the command CSH. Okay, and then source the CSHRC file. Okay, source space slash home slash cal slash CSHRC. Okay, CSHRC stands for shell script run command. Okay. Uh, CSHRC stands for shell script run command. Uh, this file, okay, it is a file which has details about the tool installation directory. Okay, tool installation directory because you have any number of tools, right? Uh, like uh, Virtuoso, Spectre, Ashura, and uh, each of these tools will be installed in a, a separate folder. Okay, and uh, the CSHRC file gives you the details about. Uh, the installation directory of uh, all these tools okay installation directory of all these tools um, and the, the server details of the server from where the license has to be fetched okay details of the server from where license has to be fetched okay so those two things are available over here that is why we source the CSHRC file okay and once you source the cshrc file you'll get a command prompt like welcome to cadence tool suite okay you'll get a welcome screen like this and now you can mention the name of the tool on which you wanted to work on okay so uh, we are going to work on the full custom ic design flow and for that we need a tool called virtuoso okay so i'll type the command uh, virtuoso space and the sun okay purchase your space and the sun click on enter okay uh, so here you can see this is what we call as command interpreter window okay this is what we call as command interpreter window and top uh, and on top you can see virtue so and this is going to be the version okay 6.1.7 is the version and you can see uh, some comments like what is your framework license was checked out successfully and you can also see the license checkout time okay uh, so next is i'll go to tools and i'll open library manager okay so here you can see three columns right one is library and the other one is cell and the other one is view you can see three columns okay uh, under library you can see all the predefined libraries that are provided by Cadence. 
okay predefined libraries that are provided by kms and you can also see the technology modes that are provided 45 90 and 180 okay along with that you have other general purpose libraries also uh, so if you select any one of the library file you can see the devices that are available in that particular library okay so these devices are called cells okay if you select any one of the cell then you can see the type of view that are available for each and every cell okay uh, symbol aspect ratio etc like this you can see the type of views that is available that are available for each and every cell so likewise what you're going to do is you'll be creating a library and you'll be creating a cell under that library and you'll create some views for uh, those cells okay so let us see how to do it okay so uh, to create a library i'll go into file new and select the option library okay and i'll name the library okay so how to name the library so i'll give any name for example i'll name it as one underscore in the nodule okay and click on okay click on okay and at the bottom you can see technology file for new library the bottom okay or if you minimize this also you'll be able to see that. okay uh, so here we are going to uh, work on a particular design by selecting the devices from any of the technology libraries technology nodes or technology nodes okay so for that purpose what i'll do is i'll select the third option attach to an existing technology library and click on ok now you can see the new library and the technology and the predefined libraries that are available in cadence that are provided by cadence okay so among this i'll choose gpdk 180 which means 180 nanometer technology okay so i'll select gpdk 180 and click on ok okay so now you can see okay the library has been created and if you select that you'll not be able to see the cells okay because you haven't created any so to create a cell under for this library for this library if you wanted to create a cell you should first select that okay and then go for file new and select cell b okay you can name the cell uh, for example let me uh, design and inverter okay design an inverter or a NAND gate uh, so let us see okay just a second So let us uh, uh, create a NAND kit. So I'll type the cell name as NAND underscore design. Okay, NAND underscore design and click on OK. So this uh, gets me the schematic editor. Okay, this is what we call as virtual source schematic editor. On top you can see virtual source schematic editor L editing. And you can see one underscore Kungu Nadu, which is the name of library that we had created. Okay, name of the library one underscore Kungu Nadu, and name of the cell NAND underscore design, and the type of view schematic. Okay, so now let us uh, capture the CMOS NAND gate. Uh, so for that, you need uh, two PMOS transistors that are connected in parallel and two NMOS transistors that are connected in series. Okay, so let us uh, get those devices from GPDK 180. So each of these devices is called as an instance. Okay, uh, so how to get or create an instance? I'll go to create and select instance, or I can make use of this shortcut. Okay, whatever you see on the right hand side are called shortcut keys or bind keys. Okay. So I click on I on the keyboard, okay, and you can use this drop down to select the technology node, which is GPDK 180. And here I can just search, okay, I can type the name of device, MOS, uh, so it is available. 
so i'll select that and click on ok right so here you can change the length and width of the devices for example if i want the length of the device to be one micron okay this is for example okay so i'll just type one mu okay one mu is the value okay one micron is the value meter is the unit right is that correct okay so one micron will be the value i have given the value click on tab so that unit gets auto filled okay you need not type the unit unit will be automatically filled okay and for example i'll take the width of the uh, mos transistor as 5 micron okay so i'll click on hide and i'll place it over here okay you can place n number of uh, transistors at the same instance of time okay so i've got two nmos transistors in series and then i need two pmos transistors in parallel okay so i'll go for add instance uh, the library is already gpdk 180 uh, i'll just uh, search for pmos transistor okay so type pmos and click on tab so that you can see pmos one okay so here let me have the length as one micron and the width as 10 micron okay an example okay i'm not i don't have any specification just i'm giving you an example in case if you are willing to change the values how to change it that's all okay so click on hide and place it over here okay fine so i have the nmos transistors and the pmos transistors so what else i need i need pins okay i need vdd vss input and output pins okay so for that i'll go for create pin option okay i can go for create and select pin or i can use the bind key. okay i'll make use of the bind key i'll just click on p on the keyboard i need input pins two inputs right uh, so i'll take the inputs as a and b and then vdd is also an input pin vss is also an input pin. okay so i'll click on hide you can name n number of uh, pins at the same time okay but separate them with the spaces separate them with spaces so click on hide and place the pins okay make a left mouse click to place the pins okay and take it to the top okay you can uh, place the vdd pin at the top you can also rotate the pins okay to rotate you use the bind key r okay bind key r you can click on that to rotate the pin okay if you are fine with this orientation then you can place the pin like this okay just make a left mouse click to place the pins and if you come to the bottom you can rotate the vss pin and place it over here okay so next you need the output pin okay so i'll go for add pin option again i'll name the pin as y name the output pin as y and change the direction to output this is going to be an output pin right so i'll change the direction to output click on hide and place the pin click on hide and place the pin okay so now use wires to complete the connection okay so i'll go for wire uh i'll connect the drain of uh, the pmos transistors together and drain of this first mos transistor and this will get connected to the output okay and then source of these two pmos transistors okay source of the two three pmos transistors and this will be connected to uh, vdd gate of one of the pmos transistors to input a gate of the other pmos transistor to input b okay and then what else you need you have the bulk okay you have four terminals you have what one more NMOS transistor. Okay, so source of this NMOS to the drain of the next NMOS transistor. 
and the source of last MOS transistor to VSS. Okay, bulk of both these transistors will be connected to ground. Okay, to avoid body effect. Okay, and I'll take nets from here. Okay, and I just mentioned the name of the pin. Okay, and uh, I'll just label it. Okay, uh, this is called hard connection. Okay, if you are connecting a pin directly with the terminal of a device uh, with the help of wire, that is called hard connection. And if you are connecting a pin with the help of labeling, okay, so that is what we call as soft soft connection. So I'll name this as A, and I'll name this as B. Okay, fine. So this is the schematic here. We have connected the bulk to ground, and same way, uh, bulk of PMOS transistors have to be connected to supply. So I use wire and complete the connection. Bulk of both the tra PMOS transistors are connected to supply VDD. Okay. So now what I'll do is I'll save this circuit. Okay, so for saving the circuit, what I'll do is I'll have I have two save options. One is uh, uh, just save, which saves your circuit as it is, and the other one is check and save. Okay, it checks if there are any floating pins or floating terminals. Floating in the sense, if there are any terminals that are left unconnected, or if there are any wires that are left unconnected. Okay, it uh, checks for your circuit, and then it saves it. In case if you have any errors, then those errors can be checked out in the command interpreter window. Okay, now let us see. I'll go for second save. You can see the uh, save option with a uh, green color tick mark. So I'll go for second save. If you go back to the command interpreter window, you, then you can check the status in the last two lines. Okay, you don't have any errors or warnings. Okay, so you can move ahead. So what I'll do next is I'll create a symbol for this uh, uh, circuit. Okay, symbol in the sense it is called as a top level hierarchy. Okay, uh, I'll create a top level hierarchy for this because in case if you are uh, uh, required to use uh, use this man gate in some other uh, design with some other design then again you need not uh, uh, use for all the four transistors okay you can just uh, use the symbol okay use the symbol created out of it okay so what i'll do is to create a symbol i'll go for create okay and then i'll go to cell view under cell view i'll go for from cell view okay so here you can see the library name okay cell name from schematic, I am creating a symbol. Okay, so just I'll select OK. So here you can determine or you can decide upon the pin location. On left hand side, I'll have my input pins. On the right hand side, I'll have my output pin. On top, I'll have a VDD, and at the bottom, I'll have my VSS. So left pins A and B. Right pins, I'll just cut VDD from here and paste it as a top pin and then i have vss i'll cut it from here and i'll make it as a bottom pin on the right hand side i'll have my output pin okay so click on okay so this will be your default symbol okay you can either make use of this or you can uh, uh, create your own symbol by using the drawing tools you can see the drawing tools over here you can use them and create your own symbol okay so what even you can uh, replace your pins okay so for example if i wanted to bring this down i'll select this and bring it down and along with that i'll also have to bring this down okay and if i wanted to create my own symbol okay so what i'll do is i'll remove this inner rectangle okay so outer rectangle uh, um, uh, indicates the floor plan for your symbol okay i'll remove this inner angle i'll just make a left mouse click to select it and click on delete okay 
I can also um, bring this uh, pin B in the words. Okay, so now I can draw a straight line. Okay, so I'll draw a straight line like this. Okay, and I'll uh, complete it like this. Okay, and then I need a curve over here. Okay, so for that I can use this ellipse create arc option. Okay, so I can start from here and I can do it like this. And you can have this angle like this. Okay, you can have something like this. Or you can uh, also uh, re redraw this. Okay, you can go for undo. Okay, and you can redraw this. Okay, I'll go for create line. Okay, you can stop it here. And same thing, you can stop it here. And then I can create an arc. Okay. So like this. Okay. And here. Okay. Land gate, right? So I'll use uh, create circle option to get the bubble in front. Okay. So I'll go for create circle. And I'll place it here and get the bubble like this. Okay. So symbol of a land gate. Okay, you need not worry about whether this uh, terminal has the symbol or not. That is uh, fun, okay, because electrical connections will be available by default, okay. So you need not worry about the connectivity, okay. So you can check and save this symbol, okay. And you can go back to the command interpreter window to check if there are any errors. So you don't have any errors, okay. So uh, you have created a transistor level design and for that you have also created a symbol, top level hierarchy for that. Okay, so I can close this symbol and I can close this transistor level design. Okay, now I need to uh, uh, simulate it, right? For that I need to give some stimuli, input stimuli to the design. Okay, so what shall we do? We'll make use of the symbol that we had created and create a and build a test print circuit okay so let us see how to do it i'll close this okay i'll create a different cell okay so within the same library okay so now you can see within this one underscore kundunadu i have created a cell and if you select the cell you can see the type of views that we have created we created a cell schematic view and you created a symbol for that okay now i can create one more cell okay so i can go to file new and go for cell view okay and go for cell view so i can give a different name since it is going to be a test match i'll give underscore test okay and select okay and select okay just a second participants Now let us instantiate the symbol that we had created. So I'll go for add instance. Okay. Uh, let us go for the library. Okay. So this is this is the library where, uh, under which we created the symbol one underscore kundunaru, and uh, within the land underscore design is where we created the symbol. So I'll select that and uh, click on hide and place your symbol. 
okay so you have your NAND gate over here click on escape so you have five pins okay two inputs one output one supply and one ground so for all these things you need to make some sources or you need to give some connections okay so for the output pin let me give an output port so for that i'll go for uh, add pin option i'll give a name for the pin so what i'll do is i'll mention the name as v underscore out okay click on hide and place the pin now for ground i'll go for universal ground and this uh, terminal will be available within the analog lib library so within analog lib library i'll search for ground click on hide and place it over here and then uh, i'll search for universal supply ddd okay so click on hide and get it over here okay then i have two inputs okay uh, so let me uh, go for a pulse input okay let us give pulse stimuli so for that i'll go for add instance with an analog lib itself uh, i'll search for v pulse okay so voltage one okay voltage one is uh, uh, your the value of voltage for logic zero voltage two value of uh, uh, voltage for logic one okay so logic zero let it be zero volt itself and logic one let me give us three volt okay and period uh, for input one let me give 20 nanosecond as period and delay time let me give 10 nanoseconds rise time one pico fall time one pico and pulse rip is uh, uh, half of the period right uh, 50 percent or more than 50 percent of the period okay so i'll uh, mention 10 nanosecond as a pulse rip this will be input a okay so i'll place it over here and then i need input b right so for that i'll mention the value of voltage as 3 volt period let me take it as 40 nanoseconds delay time let me take it as 20 nanosecond rise time one pico fall time one pico and pulse width i'll take it as 20 nanoseconds okay so click on hide and i'll place it over here i need ground terminals for both these input sources so i'll select uh, the ground from here and I'll copy it okay so click on C on the keyboard uh, for copying it and just make a left mouse click to get a copy okay again I'll click on C make a left mouse click and drag to create a copy okay now we have uh, the uh, inputs or stimuli for all the terminals let us complete the connection okay so I'll go for wire complete the connection uh, from output pin to the output port okay vss to ground vdd to vdd okay and here i'll go for soft connection okay i'll just extend wires from a and b connect negative terminal of v first to ground and positive terminal from the positive terminal i'll extend the wires okay and let me name the next i'll use label for that uh, so i'll name it as a1 and i need i need it at both the places right one at the source and the other one at the logic gate so i'll type a1 twice and b1 twice click on hide and i'll place it over here a1 a1 b1 b okay so this will be our test setup to check the functionality of NAND gate okay uh, so let us stop here and uh, continue in the next session okay so we are now and uh, open for queries okay so in case if you have any queries you can ask me So I'll check and see if this design, if you go back to the command interpreter window, 
you can check out the errors we don't have any errors or warnings okay so any queries participants you can ask me uh, about your doubts if you if you have any doubts you can let me know I'm unable to see the chat, so let me stop sharing. Yeah, now I am able to see the chat. So, any doubts, participants? Participants, if you have any doubts, means you can ask. You can either post your question in chat box, or else unmute yourself when you discuss the course. Your mic was enabled, you know. Any doubts, participants, or any queries? Any queries, participants? Anybody else? <laughs> someone called Basina. Uh, you can ask your query. <laughs> Any queries, participants? I think there is uh, no queries from participants yet, sir. In case if you have something else, uh, you can ask me. Thus, we shall uh, continue during the next session. Inshallah. I think there is uh, no sir. Okay, sir. Okay. okay, sir. We will meet in our future sessions. Yeah, sure. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks for your patience. We'll again uh, uh, get back together by. Dear participants, the day 10 session 1 attendance and feedback link is posted in the uh, chat box, so kindly check it. Thank you all.